Thank you to Doquali, Tangerines, and probably others for requesting this episode. Welcome to Conlang Critic, the show that gets facts wrong about your favorite Conlang. I'm Jan Meesley, about the most superficial commentator on Conlang was since the idiotic B. Gilson, and in this episode we'll be looking at a failed oxlang with a name that starts with V and has an umlaut, Fullapuk. Fullapuk is an IAL that was created in 1879 by the late father Johann Martin Schleier. At the time it was made, it quickly gained a highly negative reputation for sounding ugly and nonsensical. Fullapuk became the butt of linguistic jokes that still survive to this day, like in Dutch, where the word Volapuk means gibberish, or in Russian, where where Volopuk refers to writing Russian with the Latin alphabet based on how letters look rather than how they sound. A lot of this was probably due to the sheer novelty of the idea, rather than actual flaws with the language's design. As far as I'm aware, it was the first ever a posteriori auxiliary language, or in other words, the first language meant to be used to facilitate international communication with vocabulary derived from existing natural languages. This concept has been done many, many times, but Volopuk is where it all started. Does it hold up to modern standards? Let's find out, I guess. Its consonants are ma, na, ba, da, ga, pa, ta, ka, tsa, cha, the, za, je, fa, ha, wa, la, ya, ra. This consonant inventory appears in modern Volapuk, but it differs from Schleier's original design somewhat. Specifically, the labiovelar approximant and the rhotic were absent originally, for the benefit of speakers of languages like Russian, which has no W sound, and Japanese, which has no rhotic sound. The two sounds were added later, probably to make loanwords a bit more recognizable. Aside from that weird decision, this inventory is mostly pretty reasonable. It's pretty neat how most of the fricatives in Africans aren't distinguished by voiciness. It shows that Schleier actually thought about what might be hard for people from different backgrounds to pronounce, which is a big step up from how most other Oxlang's inventories are designed. Volapuk's vowels are e, u, u, a, e, o, a, a. Come on, Schleier, you were off to such a good start with those consonants. This vowel inventory is pretty transparently based on German and French, both of which are relatively vowel-heavy languages. You don't really need to look hard to find languages that are incompatible with this. Like, sure, you can kinda map it to English, but for languages like Mandarin and Spanish, you just can. Eight vowels is simply too many. And yes, I know it's possible to learn how to make new sounds, but for an auxiliary language, you really shouldn't need to. Orthographically, Volapuk is okay. Most of the decisions made here make sense. There is the letter X used for X, which I'm not a fan of, but whatever. The extra vowels being written like they are in German is perfectly reasonable, though they honestly shouldn't be there in the first place. They also can be written with digraphs, in case you're technologically restricted from writing umlauts, or with these neat-looking original letters Schleier designed himself, in case you're technologically able to do whatever the heck you want. Volapuk's grammar allows its speakers to do some somewhat unnecessary things. We're all about minimalizing grammar here on Conline Critic, and Volapuk really does not do that. Nouns have two numbers and four cases. These are simple enough, but it gets much worse with verbs. So, verbs have prefixes that indicate tense. However, what vowel the prefix uses depends on the aspect. Then, the letter P is added to the prefix if the verb is in the passive voice. Then, if the verb is in the habitual aspect, the letter I is added to the prefix. And then, there's also two other prefixes for the gerund forms of verbs. This makes a total of 26 verb prefixes and count the null prefix. However, there's also suffixes, which are used for the infinitive mood, participles, the imperative mood, the optative mood, the dressive mood, the apodosis, and the potential mood. That's seven suffixes, making a total of 182 forms of any individual verb. But we're still not done because the interrogative mood and protasis are written with two suffixes that are technically different from the other ones because you write them with a hyphen and they're unstressed, bringing our total number of forms of any individual verb up to 234. But wait, we're still not done, because pronouns, more on those in a bit, are also part of the verb, bringing the total up to 3042. That's just so many is the thing. Like, you straight up don't need all of these. And while it's certainly easier to learn this system than it would to learn a more naturalistic system where every one of those 3042 combinations is a separate affix, and it's cool how you're allowed to just ignore them and not mark any verb, it's still bizarre to me that Schleier thought that the distinction between stuff like requests, commands, and demands was something so important that it wouldn't be enough to just use words for please and immediately or something, and that how politely you're asking someone to do something absolutely needed to be not only placed directly on the verb, but on the stressed syllable of the verb. The vocabulary is mostly taken from English, with some from German and some from French. However, the words were distorted enough that any advantage this would give to the speakers of those languages is all but gated. It's unlikely that any English speaker would figure out that Wollapu comes from the English words world and speak without it being pointed out to them. This was actually intentional. Schleier knew that if he just straight up used English words for the whole thing without changing anything about them, it would give English speakers an unfair advantage. Volapuk has seven singular pronouns. Ob, ol, of, om, os, on, and ok. Originally, they roughly corresponded to I, you, she, he, it, you, and themselves. It's a bit more complicated, though. First of all, on, which I translated as you, isn't actually a second-person pronoun. It means you in the way that you'd be using it if you said this sentence, where you isn't actually a specific person, but just like people in general. People used to say one for this in English, but nowadays that's mostly something one does if one wants to sound more sophisticated than one actually is. Second of all, the way om and os mean he and it is kinda weird. Like, when you're talking about inanimate objects in the third person, use om because this is the 1800s, so obviously men are default, women are abnormal, and other genders don't exist. Anyway, os is used whenever the subject is abstract, and isn't actually a specific thing. Modern Volapuk uses these pronouns differently. Essentially, the collective pronoun om is used as an epicene pronoun, and om is only used in the masculine. This is, for several wholly obvious reasons, a much-needed improvement. All of these minor reforms, from the two extra letters to the pronoun overhaul, 
overall, all had widely varying degrees of success, which resulted in several splits in the Volapuk community, which alongside the overwhelming popularity of the then newfangled Esperanto eventually led to its downfall as a potential Oxline, dropping it from nearly a million speakers to like 20. All in all, I'd say that although Volapuk is important historically, and did accomplish some noteworthy things, it's not worth learning to speak. Its vowels are too numerous, its morphology is too precise, and its vocabulary is too Anglo-centric. That in mind, I'd say that I like Volapuk more than I like Aoi, but not as much as I like Igade, making it the sixth best in our language so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I'll be reviewing Dovazul. I suppose you think that's cute. What it makes you is a fraud. Hey everyone, it's me, Yan Misali. At the end of episode 12, I revealed the languages that'll be covered up to episode 24. In case you haven't seen that, the ones that are left are Dovazul, Interlingua, Sorisol, Loglan, Zese, Futuris, Lingua Franca Nova, Interslavic, and Folksprach. None of the episodes after that are set in stone yet, but you can see my current plan for the foreseeable future on the big list by donating to my Patreon. It lists every language anyone's ever requested for me to review, and I've put them in an order based on when they were first requested and how many times they've been requested. As of the time I'm writing this, there are more episodes on the big list than there are words in Tokipona. Anyway, see ya. Yeah, but I'm a cute fraud though, right?